Well, cancer came into my life, the big C, from, um, I was born. My mother passed away when I was three, with breast cancer. Um, so having that in my awareness all my life, if you like, um, and then I had a scare, if you like, when um, my son was about four years old. Um, I had a lump under the arm and went in, but it was benign at the time. And it sounds weird, but I remember when the nurse, I was in hospital for about four days, um, worried, sick, thinking he's going to look after my son if anything happened to me, and all those things. It's amazing how much things go through your head, but she came out and said it was benign. At that time, I didn't even know what benign meant, but I just knew it was good because of the expression on her face. <laughs> Um, so that was my first scare, and then 2009, um, it wasn't even a scare what took me to the doctors, it was um, a lump on the chest, if you like. Um, it wasn't, this sounds odd, but I wasn't referring to in my head thinking it's breast cancer, I just thought, let me go and get it checked out. Because after the first visit and then you get referred, then the fear started to, not fear, yeah, the worries, concerns started to come. Um, and after a lot of tests and everything, it, was, it transpired, it was breast cancer. So that's when it sort of hit me. Yes, it is difficult because, um, as I said, the fears that come in for me were um, the family and friends, you know, what's going to happen to them, how you tell them, um, what's going to happen to me. So much different things bubble up in your mind at the time. Um, and then that struggle to just act normal, you know, continue life, continue because life doesn't stop for anything, right? Not even cancer, um, unless it's affecting you to that degree. But it was the the, the worries that came about was how the impact is going to have on myself, on my family, my children, especially. Um, my partner at the time was um, diagnosed as a manic depressive, but um, bipolar, so life was quite hectic in and out of that. Um, so all those worries and things come to the fore, really and truly, yeah. And you don't know how long it's going to pan out. After I got diagnosed, um, I was put on a treatment of radiotherapy. To some degree, because I've met so many people with breast cancer, I, I won't say lucky, but I, I had a, a series of, I think it was 10 radiotherapy sessions. Um, and then I did a lot of... Um, what do you call it? Self. The statement of self. So I did mindfulness, I did meditation, I did all those sorts of things, eating well, um, to try and get not just um, the cancer under control, but my whole self, the sort of balance under control, to deal with it. The support of my immediate family were brilliant. Um, my kids really kept me up positive because that's how I brought them up. Um, and the simple things in a sense where, what kept me going, I remember just going through to Bart's um, for, the, for the radiotherapy sessions, um, putting on nice clothing and um, things to read and even the journey can be, because your mind is just always ticking, so to fill those gaps with positive things. I remember walking home sometimes because it was during the August time, um, just walking, appreciating just the simple things. Um, and that's through reading a lot of self-help books and talking to other people who've gone through the experiences. And a lot of it is down to choice, what you, how you choose. And I've actually know someone whose um, son passed away with it and you can choose to either make that swallow you up, which it was a very, very thin, you know, flip that way or flip the other way where you pull on the positives and the positives where my kids were here. I still had life, I was only having a radiotherapy as opposed to chemotherapy, that kind of stuff. Just pulling on those sorts of things. I think it's fear coupled with not knowing because um, I think it's after I had the breast cancer and, and, and getting involved with different groups and, and support groups, etc. It, it, it came to my awareness that breast cancer was more prevalent in black, younger women. We still sort of see it as with the older women. Um, so coming from me knowing that, I'm thinking that there's everybody, a lot of people don't are aware that it should, it's a lot prevalent more with younger black women. So a lot of it's not knowing. 
um, and the fear. I, I can't talk about the fear. I don't know anybody experiencing that. With my two daughters, I encourage them to go and have a look. But then again, the system doesn't allow you to go and check as often as you'd like, for one. Um, with my daughters, I think they can have the annual checks because I've had it. Um, but I think there should be a lot more information in schools, in colleges, in, in those sorts of areas, in even care, um, using people who have gone through it. I think that what the peer-to-peer -peer work works tremendously. I'm talking from my working my young people. If you had young people, young black women who experienced the cancer to go out there and advocate on that part, I think that would help. Because it's still a not known, not many people are aware of it, that it's so much more prevalent in younger black women than it was before, than it was before. My main treatment is here at Homerton, besides the radiotherapy, that's what I went to Barts for. But, um, and I received counselling, which was very, very helpful for Macmillan. That helped me a lot to, to deal with some of the stuff I was dealing with. Um, but in the main, the professions that I, I, supported me and I came across were really, really helpful. I think it helps that um, when you're articulate. Um, it helps when you can... Um, um, I've had experience with medical professions for years prior with my partner in and out with his bipolar, etc. Learning how to talk with doctors and ask the questions and, and so on. Um, and that helps when you, you feel quite confident. Not that I was always confident, but I, I would ask questions or um, go and look up. I do a lot of research, personal research into anything. If I hear something, I'll go and look it up on the internet. We have that privilege in this time to support whatever I'm thinking of or you know, for an experience, so. But yeah, in the main, the professionals I came across were very, very helpful. Macmillan, oh, they were brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but all the nursing staff, as I said earlier, the two consultants I had, I was privileged with two, um, were brilliant. As I, I saw myself as a positive, as quite positive beforehand. But afterwards, it changed dramatically. I was never really um, mad health conscious, but that raised a bar, quite a bar, in what you eat. And along with that lifestyle, getting out more, all those simple things. Um, meditation took over in a big way. Um, I started going to this place called um, Barma Kamaris, which is like a, it's not, it's not a religious thing, it's more spiritual, I suppose. Um, where people go and they can talk about their own experiences and share. Um, and that helped a lot. Me and my son used to go to that. Um, but yeah, pulling on all those positives, the fact that... Because I used to be my kids that before I even had the cancer about, you know, your eyes open in the morning, say thank you. You can raise your head up off the pillow. And it came to um, really mean something. Those sorts of things really mean something for me.